Time to bring in our market guy of the moment. That would be Mark Grant. Hey, Mark. Um, yes, sir. I want to talk to you. Now, you specialize in the bond market in interest rates. You're not so much a stock guy. You're a, a bond and interest rate guy. You consistently sure. said that you believe that we're going to have negative interest rates in America, that short-term rates will come down and down and down and down and eventually go negative. Do you still hold that position? Because I see longer-term rates going up at the moment. Stuart, I'll join the Beatles and say I say hello. <laughs> I had Dennis Gartman on earlier. I know Dennis. We're friends. He's a very good intellect. Um, and he's looking at the fundamentals of the uh, bond market that I don't disagree with. Where I disagree with him, though, is that I think because of the uh, stimulus packages and the amount of spending that the Biden administration wants to do, that there's going to be tremendous pressure put on Janice Yellen and put on the Fed to expand their asset sheet and to uh, buy more bonds and to keep yields very low so the government doesn't have to pay uh, much in terms of uh, interest rates on uh, the outstanding bonds. If you look at Europe, you look at Japan, you look at Switzerland, they're all negative interest rates, and I think there's going to be a big push in the United States to uh, hmm. have the Fed expand their balance sheet and lower rates even further. Then so, yes, what would I'm be the fallout? Energy. I mean, if, if you're right, and if, if interest rates fall and fall and fall and eventually go negative, what's the fallout from that? How do you think the stock market would react to that? How do you think investors would react when they're looking for some kind of... So there's a direct correlation, Stuart, between the amount of money in the Fed's uh, balance sheet and the increase in the asset size and the stock market, which is very positive. In terms of bonds right now, it's very difficult to find any kind of yields at all. Even if you look at the 10-year Treasury, Stuart, at 1.2%, the inflation rate is 1.4 percent, so you're negative in terms of real rates. Bonds have compressed and compressed, corporate bonds, mortgage bonds, high-yield bonds, Stuart. Last week hit an all-time low in terms of yield at 3.96 percent. So I think that uh, in the out-of-the-box, which is my commentary, I wrote that investors, both institutions and people, have to swivel, have to pivot and start looking at closed-end funds, some exchange-traded funds where you can get outsized yields, in some cases double-digit yields, and go there in terms of the interest rates because I think as a conservative investor that depending upon your age, you should have X amount of money for appreciation, but you should also have cash flow and an income, which uh, typically has been the bond market, which you can't get anymore, so you've got to pivot and look at some of these funds to get yield. Last one, and I've only got 30 seconds for you. You yes, know sir. how old I am. <laughs> Should I sell my Microsoft? Well, you know, you say that all the time, but I think you've got dyslexia because you're really 27 and not 72 in my opinion. So. <laughs> nice try. Uh, no, I think you should hold on to your Microsoft, but I also think you should have some of your assets and income producing uh, uh, funds, a lot of them pay monthly, so you get compound interest as well. And if you can get outsized yields and a steady uh, cash flow, I think that's where some of your money, not all of it, some of it should be along with trying for appreciation in Microsoft or various other singular stocks. Okay. I've been doing that, and I appreciate your help. Thanks very much indeed. Always good to see you. We'll see you again real soon. You too. Yes, sir.